doesn't look like a mishap. That is House of the Dragon. Yeah. We keep getting more uh, more sort of te uh, teasers, set photos, re leaked stuff. There's, I guess, somewhat a bit of controversy going on. I and mean, we posted a video on it. You know what? Yeah. And uh, Ez and I like the casting of Paul oh, Valerian. Yeah, right. I wanted to Sweet. get... Jimmy, I want to get your thoughts on it because, I mean, I think it's a, a good uh, decision. I, I can talk about why here in a second. We did a separate standalone YouTube video. Go check that out. Uh, but, Jimmy, what do you think about the, the casting of Corliss Valerion? I mean, I think it, I think it works out. I actually watched your guys' video on your YouTube on the Bend the Knee YouTube, uh, which I'm subscribed with my bell turned on on that. Um, but, you know, I think that I think it's a great casting for all the reasons that you guys stated there. But just in general, you know, it's an accomplished actor with a great look. Like the when we got the picture of him on set, phenomenal. Like, how can you look at that and be discouraged? I don't see costumes good, hair looks good, and then he has a very noticeable face, right? Like his face stands out to me. And I think, uh, you know, like you said, there's a little bit of controversy, of people being mad, saying, "Oh, it's not book accurate and stuff like that." But uh, th there's there's also a lot of misinformation saying that George said that you know there there were only white people in Valeria and stuff like that. That's not the case. George has never said that. That's not, mm. that's not confirmed. That's not canon. So I feel like the controversy is just people, one gatekeeping or having other, you know, negative <laughs> motivations with that, that we can all yeah. a guess at. Right. Um, so I say, forget those people. I say it's a great casting. And I say, yeah. if, if, if it's too far from the source material, which isn't even factual based on what we know from George, uh, it's not for you, and then maybe you don't have to tune in. Uh, let's just enjoy this. I, I think, I think it's a good yeah. casting. Uh, you know, it's not, it's not some nobody. It's not, um, you know, it's not like you know he's built to be seven feet tall, and we got a five foot actor. Like that's not the case. Like if they cast Dunk with Tyrion, you know, with Peter Dinklage, I'll be mad. But that's mm -hmm. not the case here, folks. It's not. So I'm pumped up for it. I, I, I yeah. think it's a great casting, and I thought the set, the uh, scenes that we saw, like the pictures, were phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with I'm with I'm with I'm 100 with you, Jimmy. And like, here's here's my here's my thing. You know, like, you're taking a house that we did not see again. First and foremost, l let me l let me let me let me say this right. As somebody who obviously we love the books, right? And we we love the books and everything. But when you see comic book movies adapted, they change stuff all the time. Like Game yeah. of Thrones was way more accurate to the books than most other things. Um, but, you know, they're doing this for TV. They don't as as much as I, you know, we're all book lovers here, but HBO doesn't care about the books. They just don't. Guy, okay? like, that's that's <laughs> that, that, that's just how it works. That's pretty clear. You know, it is. I mean, I'm sorry, but it, it, it's just how it is. Any any time a comic book movie is made or whatever, they're making their own adaptation of it. And if it goes exactly this way in the comics, well, this aren't this isn't the comics. This is Avengers or you know whatever. It doesn't matter. That's just how they, that's just how they do it. Now, like they're taking House Valerian, which we did not see in Game of Thrones, and I don't even think was ever even mentioned in the show. I'd have to go back and look to see if maybe at some point they were specifically mentioned. They might have been in some of those, um, the extras, right, where they give the lore and stuff, and stuff and stuff like that. But as far as I remember, I don't remember House of Valerian ever even being mentioned in the in the TV show. But they're taking they're taking a house that we didn't see and. They're gonna uh, they're gonna go down the route that they're going down with. I'll go ahead and say it right. They're they're making them they're making these Valyrians black, and people are mm -hmm. freaking out about it. And I just don't I don't I don't see the issue, man. I really just don't see the issue now. Like, if you wanted to say if you wanted to go with like a a black Targaryen, that's like like say you wanted to make Viserys Targaryen black. Mm -hmm. It'd be like, okay, well, hold on. Now this, okay, now like, now this is gonna be like, this doesn't make sense, right? How you could have this like super pale group of people, and then, you know, you're gonna put it, somebody with a darker skin. Like that doesn't add up. But I don't know. It's yeah. it's the, and even then, I'd house, be like, and people are yeah. and people are. I yeah. yeah, I still I still wouldn't care, but I could at least I could at least see the argument behind it. Be like, okay, well, hold on a second, you know, like that doesn't work, especially because Game of Thrones is something where it's like, hey, the features are such an important detail. But this is a house that mm -hmm. 
nobody watching the, when people watch this for the first time, they are not going to question it whatsoever. No, 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 it's nonsense. It's it's actually a really cool tie-in with the with the kind of platinum hair, the eyes, and and things like that to say, okay, the, like what was old Valeria, and how is the blood like more magical? How do you keep that kind of um, you know, like the, like the dragon seeds, the dragon riders. I think that's going to be a really cool piece to all of this. And I, by the way, I also did go look in. You can just go to a search of ice and fire, guys. All you have to do is go to a search of ice and fire, type in uh, Valerion, right, and look at the descriptions. It is not mentioned. Um, it's mentioned that they have pale hair uh, and that they have kind of that that platinum blonde hair and the eye color, but their skin color is is not mentioned. And it does say that they thrice um, had provided brides. Uh, for Targaryen princes, and then you know they're a, they're an ancient Valyria family that House Targaryen was okay with um, you know marrying into and and making keeping a strong kind of alliance with. I I think it's fair, and you know to to Jimmy's point, let's say something with House Targaryen. You did something like this, like guys, flash forward, and you have Baylor Breakspear, who is Dornish. You have actually Ray. I mean. Rhaegar Targaryen marries Elia Martell, like his children. He has one ch one child who is Rhaenys Targaryen, very Dornish and smelled Dornish, according uh, to, to the old Mad King. Uh, and then you have his son, Aegon, who had fair hair. So there is this kind of, you know, George is looking at the genetics and looking at uh, the seed is strong and, and, and those things. And I think you take a lesser house like House Valerion and you say, yeah, that's a house we can use. There's not much in the books on House Valerion. Uh, not much detail there. Let's use that house to try to, you know, one, if you wanted to, if it's just to bring in more diversity, I'm cool. I think that's awesome. I think that's, that's, that's a good thing. Um, and then if you, if it's also just to kind of help amplify some of the stuff that happens with Rhaenyra Targaryen and Harwin Strong, if that may be the case, or you just said, I like this actor. I think he's sick. We really like this guy. He auditioned, yeah. right? He auditioned. And we didn't really know where to put him. We go to George and George said, I never said House Valerion couldn't be, you know, I didn't, I never identified their skin color. or said that they always have to be that, that same way. Also look at how many families and houses, right? Have inter kind of like marriages in the family. You're mm -hmm. related to individuals who aren't the same skin color of you in the same family. That's like modern. <laughs> That's a thing. So it's just kind of wild. I, yeah. So I think it's cool. I love it. He does look absolutely badass, and I think House Valerion is going to be sick. Also, they're making a TV show around this guy too, right? That was the rumor is that the sea that, that, that yeah. I, why not? Because he looks awesome, and 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 I went and looked up some of his his work and just clips of him acting and stuff, and yeah, it's phenomenal. He's legit. Yeah. So. Yeah. So I will say. So the wiki says, and again, this is actually where I got. I'm going to confirm for myself here uh, because. The people sort of the the people sort of leading the charge is the I forget I always blank on their names Linda helped and um, Linda El and Elio. Elio Elio the the people who wrote the World of Ice and Fire book well they run the wiki and so it says chapter twelve of a feast for crows it's a Cersei chapter where the Valyrians are described as very much having Targaryen features of um, silver hair purple eyes and pale skin but I can't see I'm trying to see exactly when that was edited to see if like this has been edited over the past weekend because. Man, they, she's like going to war with all these other bigger, like sort of Game of Thrones YouTubers and stuff like that. And I don't really like to get involved in any of that stuff. I just kind of, hey, we just kind of do our own yeah. thing here. Right? Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, you know, I mean, did did Game of Thrones not was Game of Thrones an unsuccessful show because uh, Daenerys didn't have purple eyes? Because I seem to remember it having more awards than any mm -hmm. show in the history of television. So yeah, it's right. I guess I I, I mean I I guess based upon this logic that House of the Dragons is just going to fail because they're choosing to pick somebody that doesn't have pale skin. I mean, unless I unless I unless I'm you know, oh that's right, <laughs> Game of Thrones won more awards than any show in the history of television. So yeah, I don't I don't think I don't think not going with one feature is going to cause it to. Uh, fail yeah, just, and, and casting's just gonna, always been yeah. so strong, you know, and, and they picked them Seriously. for a reason. Uh, they, they saw his audition. They said, this is the guy. Everyone says he has a, a very strong presence on screen. That character needs to have a strong presence on screen. I think we're going to be okay. And I think we let the dummies be dumb. Sure. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I agree with as you. As far as I'm I concerned, agree. guess also, what? Also, let me ask you guys one. Yeah. 
remember something. This podcast is not called, oh, you know, it's called Bend the Knee, damn it. So that's just how it is. <laughs> hey, whoa, <laughs> preach it, son. Get after it now. Look Let's out. Let's go. Uh, I do want to ask a quick question, and I, maybe this will help our, our some listeners or whoever. But, like, you know, George has gone back, and when he's writing the histories, he's writing those to fit with his a, a Song of Ice and Fire, his the, the main work. You know what I mean? The histories can be altered and changed. Go look at Tolkien. I mean, he went and changed a lot mm-hmm. of various things to make this fit into work. He wanted it to have a, a mythology, a history, a background, a world. And George is doing kind of the same thing. The uh, instead of the Silmarillion, what do they call it? The the, the Grimmarillion. The Grimmarillion. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> so, is he allowed to go back and say? Is he allowed to change things? I think he is. I think if he wanted to go back and say, you know what? Actually, I kind of like the idea that this is this is a new thought that's come to me, and I think that would work better. And I think that's maybe uh, even even if that wasn't like what he shared with like Linda or Elia or whoever in the creation of A World of Ice and Fire, George is allowed to say. I mean, first of all, this George has always been a guy who the writing evolves on him. He gets a little carried away. He changes things because it comes to him and he's like, this is better. And I want to let my work and my creation grow and evolve. So when he thinks back on the history and he thinks back on old Valeria, he's saying, you know what? It's it's not as simple and straightforward as we once thought. Let me throw. And I bet you they ask him about this. I would not be surprised at all. He signed the deal, like the the, the, five year deal or whatever with Mm -hmm. HBO. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised at all if they said, hey, we got a really good actor here and we have an idea for it. Even if they approached him with the idea, I still think it's it's awesome and it's, it's hey, fine. George um, Lucas, George Lucas changed so, Star Wars like 100 times. And you know what? I still watch it and I'm still <laughs> like, this is awesome. So, yeah, yeah, I don't care. Maybe we'll get the maybe we'll get the George Lucas version of the Game of Thrones cut one day and it'll be George's thing. And you'll just see Lady Stoneheart walking CGI put in walking in all, you know, in all of the scenes. <laughs> That's cool. And it's. It, 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 I mean, guys, he's like the executive producer of all this stuff. He's still like involved. So it was pro- if you got a problem, go ask George. Yeah, and that's actually something I saw uh, someone tweet at Gray, uh, um, uh, Linda. I think it was Gray Area. Uh, maybe tweeted. Oh, she's like, going. Well, she's going to like talk to George. <laughs> yeah, I mean, maybe she responded to. It. Maybe maybe she wasn't the exact one, but I mean, I was with it. It was like it was somebody had tweeted. I, I saw. I know someone tweeted at Linda was like, "Why don't you ask George? Like, confirm this with George." And she said, "I don't care what George has to say about this." Well, and then you're wrong. for me, it's like, okay, like okay, you you're out, you're out of your mind at this so, point. Like, let me Linda's read. It's gone. Yeah, l- let me read it. Like this is from a feast of uh, a feast for crows, Cersei three, and it's talking about Valeria chapter so, twelve, right? Uh. Yeah, this is uh, probably yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's see. The first time, let me see. Marjorie was there. We're talking about Marjorie uh, a little bit. Um, you've got uh, the the bastard of drift, Mark. All right, is is there? So it was not the first time the queen had uh, made note of Waters, a lean young man uh, with gray green eyes and long silver golden hair. The first time she had seen him. For half a heartbeat, she'd almost thought Rhaegar Targaryen. So we're making a connection. Again, he's a bastard uh, of, of House Valerion. Had returned from the ashes. It is, um, it is his hair, she told herself. Uh, not, he's not half as comely as Rhaegar was. His face is too narrow, and he has that cleft in his chin. The Valerions came from old Valeria stock. However... Uh, and some of them had silvery hair as the Dragon Kings of old. So that's the lines being thrown out there quite a bit that like, yes, they had some of them, some, not all. That was a gray area's point on her Twitter rant as well, which is like, look, it was left open. It was really the hair color that was emphasized and sometimes the eye color and that they came from old Valeria stock. And I think within that, I mean, the only two houses we know that really kind of survive from old Valeria are the Valerians and and uh, House Targaryen? Mm-hmm. So wh- how do you know what that? And, and we also it's and we also don't know who they, people. We also don't know who they've married, who they've married into at any yeah. point. We right. don't know. We you you don't know. I mean, certain Targaryens look more Dornish than others, right? Because they sometimes they marry yeah. into Dorn. And at the end of the well, yeah, look, at the end of the look day, at the Starks so, who, who are married into House <laughs> Tully. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, who yeah, does? Right? I, I, yeah, I mean, who cares? It, yeah, I mean, it's gonna be sick. I I was surprised that it was. Uh, I mean, I think initially I was just, I was like, okay, cool. That's that's not. Now I'll give everybody this. Is that what I how is that what I thought House Valerian, um, 
Look, it was there was so no, few details this, on House Flareon. It's not what I thought when I was reading the books for sure, but that's because there was so little there. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's why I think it was a good choice, though, because there is so little on House Valerion. That's an easy go uh, to to make to make this call and this decision. I think it's fine. So, yeah. Yep. Uh, ah, yeah, good stuff. Know. I'm hey. excited. The, the shots, the shots look sick, guys. Let's be honest about that. The shots look sick, and we were just uh, we, the three of us were just arguing about another another um, series <laughs> that is not doing that. I mean, they're in early production, and they have professional quality, really good costume shots, and that's all it took for us to go. Yes, like more. Let's go. The tank is fuel, like it's fueled, and I'm ready. Yeah, and it went global trending on Google and Twitter. Yeah, um, and I think it's going to be big. I think Me it's going to be big. Yep, agreed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's gonna be sweet. It's going to be sweet. I mean, I mean, Jimmy, what do you think about like Matt Smith and some of these other, th- some of these other? So like, so oh. we've seen other pictures of like Matt Smith as as Damon Targaryen, and yeah, I mean, <laughs> that was it. I mean, w- when I saw Matt Smith was being cast, so I'm not like a huge Doctor Who fan or anything, so I didn't care much about that. But just looking at his headshot, I was like, oh, yeah, that's a Targaryen. Like, mm-hmm. here we go. Like, that's what I imagine, you know, whenever uh, you, re- you read the books. And I'm just like seeing him in costume. It was better than I imagined. And I like I don't know. Did you look at the jacket? It had uh, I believe it was like little embroidered mm-hmm. dragons. on. I mean, very fine detailed. Uh, and I thought I thought the hair looked good and all the scenes look good. I, I, I'm excited. I think Matt Smith's going to uh, win a lot of awards on this show. Yeah, I do. Yeah, uh, I agree Matt, with you. Matt, Matt Smith is, I mean, literally, um, as crazy as it seems, because Doctor Who itself is this show where it's like, it's sort of a dramedy, I guess, right? Like, I would say it's more so it's, it's kind of lighthearted or whatever. But when it gets serious, it gets like, it, the drama in it is so good. And Matt Smith was like so good at it. And then you watch him in The Crown. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think he's he's about, because he's he is sort of a bigger actor. Um, but it's really, he, again, he is one of those like BBC kind of guys where he does a lot of shows that end up, mm-hmm. you know, um, he's a British actor. So not as many Americans know him just yet. Um, so I think he's about to enter that next level. Like mm-hmm. a actor where everyone's mm-hmm. like, "Oh, I know, I know who that guy is," yep. and he's a, he's amazing. Yeah, yeah, I think I've saw some pe- some people, uh, you know, were saying, "Oh, look, it's uh, you know, mom, I want I want a girl from Rivia from Witcher, and we have it at home." And then they were showing like the picture. Of Matt Smith. <laughs> I did I did find that yeah. to be pretty funny, <laughs> but uh, uh, let's let's be honest. Uh, I think that the costumes looked really good, and Matt Smith has acting chops. I've seen him in The Crown, and it's it's gonna work gonna work very well there's a lot to be excited about with this show a lot yeah yep absolutely um all right man if you're if you're cool with this i have a quick little house of the dragon i just want to kind of give a shout out we've got people writing us in here so we have uh if guys remember btk cast when house of the dragon comes out we we read your raven on the show okay you got thoughts we will read it on the show and it's just a lot of fun so this is just kind of a quick shout out uh to sir doug so Sir Douglas of the Burning River, who was talking about the Hour of the Wolf. And I just got this kind of funny, as uh, although that's like the end of the Dance of Dragons. But it says, uh, my lords, I hope this raven finds you well. I write to you upon the heels of the first photos of House of the Dragon being released. And personally, I could not be more excited. And Sir Douglas, that's what we're saying here, right? Like they've Just these photos have got us fired up to the point where... We just we, we want more. The speculation will grow. Things are going to keep happening. And this is, by the way, remember, friends, this is not we don't have everything like fire and blood is not the end all be all and has all the details. There are side things. There are side characters, new characters that they're going to weave in here to surprise even your book book readers. And it's going to be I think it's going to be a mega hit. Mm-hmm. So um, the one thing I am hoping to see the series uh, makes it to in later seasons is Craig and Stark and the Hour of the Wolf. And Sir Matt has said this as well. Uh, I think how Stark is it, it is going to have to be important in this because what do people know? We know in Game of Thrones, we know the Targaryens. Um, it's going to be kind of different, right? Like in A Song of Ice and Fire or Game of Thrones, we were following the Stark family, right? And we had one Targaryen, one who we're, we heard about, we would follow, and she's, you know, the mother of dragons. Now we're doing a big switch here. Now we are following a full set of Targaryens. 
It's just the exact opposite. And we'll hear about the wolves up north. We'll hear about them, maybe Craig and Stark, and we'll hear about some of them. And, and maybe we'll see them for a great council of some kind or for a funeral or, or a wedding or something like that. But in the end, the hour of the wolf is is coming. So the North remembers, and we will never forget Lord Craig and Stark marching to King's Landing and putting an end to the madness like a father punishing bickering children. Even as the dragons dance, let us never forget that winter is coming. Your humble hedge knight, Sir Douglas of the Burning River. So I just thought I'd throw that out there. Shout out to him because uh, he writes us quite a bit. And I, I hope more folks will start as we get closer to House of the Dragon. Write us your thoughts, your favorite. I mean, Sir Matthew Perry sent us in something. Your favorite moments from this, um, from this, you know, Targaryen reign. I mean, like the, this, this batch, like the Dance of Dragons. What do you like about it? What are you amped to see? Where do you think that there are some voids that could be filled? Like, do you think we'll get some of the questions to whether Mushroom was correct, right, or what was our Maester or our Septon correct? Will we get to see behind the door and actually figure out like what some of these controversial things? like how, how they happened and how they took place. I think that will be interesting for book readers to kind of watch as we go into the show. So. Yeah. 